Hey guys, I am back fresh off a lovely COVID-19 infection. Yes, it finally caught up with me two or more years into the pandemic, uh, but that's the reason I'm looking slightly beardier than usual. But I wanted to record a new video talking about some amazing new features in Adobe Lightroom Classic, specifically the AR masking tools and how you can use those to save a shit ton of time during the import process, just getting your images ready for that tweak where you go through all your photos from a day out and just save you a ton of time. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into Lightroom and talk about this technique. So guys, here we are in Lightroom and we're going to click on the mask tab and we're going to create two new masks. The first one is the sky and I'm going to rename that one sky and we can see it's done a pretty good job of selecting that. Probably want some, uh, lose some of this ocean in here, but that's okay. We're not worrying about finessing the mask at the moment. Next thing I'm going to do is duplicate that mask and invert it to create a mask for the land. And so we're going to rename that one land. Okay, so we've got two masks now, one for the sky and one for the land. And these are now adaptive. You can just copy these over to new images if you want using the sync tool. But we're going to create a preset with them. And so what I'm going to do is click out of the masks here and apply all the other baseline tweaks that I stick on my images. And you can stick whatever you want in here. Everyone works slightly differently because we all have different tastes and different camera equipment. And one of the things that I always do is turn off the sharpening completely because I shoot with a Fujifilm X-T4 with the X-Trans sensor in it. This is a unique camera sensor. There's nothing else like it around. And Lightroom does a shitty job of sharpening images and you end up with these weird squirrely caterpillars all over the place. So I always turn off that. The other thing I do is always apply my baseline profile, which in my case is the Velvia Vivid profile. That's the one I like. I like colorful photos. So I always apply this Velvia color profile. And the third thing I do finally is come down to calibration. And I always stick a little bit of special sauce, magic sauce to the blue and green channels, 15 or so to the blue channel and five to the green, just to give you that little bit of zing. So the next thing we need to do is come over here to the preset section. Let's just make, untick that if you can't see it on your screen. Click the plus icon and click create preset. Call it anything you want. So Andy's preset. And... As you can see, it's ticked most of the stuff, but it hasn't ticked these AI masks. So select them. We want everything else ticked. Click create. Okay. So now we have this beautiful default preset set up. So all you have to do now is when you come to this import photo dialog, you come over to the side here and you select that preset you just made. And that means that every single image you import through that process will have this preset applied to them, which means that when you come back to your image, every single one of them will have that funky AI masking in here. Now, there is one small irritating wrinkle associated with this. As you will discover the first time you use this, it needs to update them. So when you first open an image you've imported and it has these two filters, it will have this little update option here. So you just click the update all and it will refresh those filters, sorry, those masks and apply them to your image. But it's a small problem in what is a fundamentally extremely useful little tool. And of course you have all your other stuff set up. I don't know if you've used default presets when you're importing your photos. I've been using it for years. I find it extremely useful and way more useful now with these amazing AI masking tools that Adobe have given us, which mean we can select the sky tool and drop the exposure down on that and the highlights and 
dehaze it and apply whatever we want just to that portion of the photo. All right, guys, that'll do for this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Testing this new setup here to record the, uh, the screen on my iMac and make these videos. I think it's worked out pretty well this time. So I'll do more of these showcasing some of the techniques that I use when I'm processing my photographs. If you enjoyed this video, you know the drill. Hit the old like button down there. And if you got value from the video, please consider subscribing to see more of my content in your YouTube feed. Thanks very much for tuning in, guys. And I'll catch you on the next one.